In another video, we looked at uh, multiplication of mixed numbers using a block or visual model. This time, we're going to look at another visual model, but we're going to break it down mathematically into an area model. Let's say we had this problem, 2 and 1 third times 1 and 3 fourths. So what we're going to do is we're going to use what we know about finding the area of a rectangle to solve this. If I had a rectangle that was 3 by 4, we know that to find the area of the rectangle, we would multiply 3 by 4, the length times the width. So our result would be 12, 12 units. For this one, we're going to break it down a little bit differently. So in this one, we're going to use that same understanding of area, and we're going to draw a rectangle that we're going to subdivide. So I'm going to start out by drawing a rectangle, but I'm going to break it into parts. I'm going to break it into my whole numbers, 2 and 1, and my fractions, 1 third and 3 quarters, like this. So on the top, I'm going to draw like this, and I'm going to label this 2 units and this 1 third. I take that from here, 2, 2, and 1 third, I place here. Next, I'm going to use my 1 and 3 quarters to do the same on the other side of the rectangle. So I'm going to subdivide it here and make this 1 and 3 quarters. From here, I've got four rectangles. So if we look, if we look at this uh, model, we've got one rectangle here. We have another rectangle here. We have a third rectangle here. And a fourth rectangle in this area. So what I'm going to do is use my measurements, two, one, one third, and three quarters, to find the sizes of each of these four rectangles. Once I know each of the individual rectangles, I can add them up to find the area of the entire rectangle. Because we know length times width will give us the area of the rectangle, we can use that backwards as a model for this multiplication. We can use one side times the other to find what the total would be. The first rectangle I'm going to look at is this rectangle that I have here. Because I know that this side is 2 and the other side is 1, I can multiply 2 times 1 to find the total. So I know the area of that rectangle is going to be 2. Next, I'm going to look at this rectangle over here. So this one I know is 1 by 1 third. Because I know that this side here is the same as over here. Because it's a rectangle, that distance is going to be the same. So I could even label if I wanted to. I could label this side 1 and know the other side's 1 third. So if I take my 1 times 1 third, I know the area of that section is going to be 1 third. Next I'm going to look at this lower part down here. This long, thin rectangle I know is going to be 2. This length is going to be 2, the same as this length at the top. And the other side is 3 quarters. So 2 times 3 fourths I know is 6 fourths. Last, I'm going to look at this rectangle in the corner, the smallest rectangle, and I know that its sides are one-third, because this side's one-third, so this one needs to be one-third, and this side is three-quarters, so I know this side is three-quarters. So it's one-third times three-fourths to get in the middle there. When I multiply the numerators, one times three, I get three, and then the denominators, three times four, I get twelve. Now that I know all my parts, 2, 1 third, 6 fourths, and 3 twelfths, I just have to add them in order to get my total. So we've moved over just to get a little more space, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my pen, and I'm going to add up these totals. So I've got 2 plus 1 third plus 6 fourths plus 3 twelfths. I know when I add... Uh, fractions with unlike denominators, I need to find a common denominator. 3, 4, and 12, we could use a common denominator of 12 and make it easy on ourselves. So, 2 will stay 2. 1 third will be 4 twelfths as an equivalent fraction. 6 fourths will turn into 18 twelfths as an equivalent fraction. And 3 twelfths can remain the same. Next, I'm going to simplify, I'm going to combine my 12s. So I've got 2 plus, and if we look at 4 plus 18 plus 3, we'll have 25 12s. 
So simplifying that down, I know that's 2 plus 2 and 1 twelfth. So that's going to give me 4 and 1 twelfth total. So that's my final answer there. So 4 and 1 twelfth is the answer to 2, times, two and 1 third times 1 and 3 quarters. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide this and I'm going to compare it if I did just our old algorithmic model of this problem to solve it and see just to prove that I get the same result over here. So first step that I'm going to do in the, in the traditional method, the shortcut way, the fastest way is I'm going to change these mixed numbers into improper fractions. So 2 and, two and 1 third is going to be 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7 thirds. And then 4 times 1 is 1, plus 7, 3 is 7 fourths. That's going to give me my two improper fractions. From there I can multiply my numerators. 7 times 7 is 49, and my denominators 3 times 4 is 12. If I simplify that, I'm going to get 4 takes care of 4 times 12 would be 48, so 48 of these numerators, of these parts, leaving me 1 left over to get to 49, so that's 1 twelfth. So, as we can see there, we get 4 and 1 twelfth, 4 and 1 twelfth. So we have the same result on each. This model is helpful because it shows how we break down the holes and the parts to create that result. It tells us what's happening behind this math, this shortcut. If we can understand this area model, then we can use this as a shortcut to get there. Here we are with one more example. We're going to do this very quickly now that you've seen it slowly explained before. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, again, I'm going to take my holes and my parts, and I'm going to make a rectangle area model. So if I start with my rectangle, then I'm going to subdivide that. So I've got four here and two-thirds. Obviously, this is not to scale, but it's just to show the parts. The other side, I've got one and one-fourth. So now I'm going to go about multiplying to find each rectangle's area. So one times four gives me area of four. 1 times 2 thirds gives me an area of 2 thirds. This rectangle uh, down here is going to be 4 times 1 fourth, which gives me an area of 1. And then 2 thirds times 1 fourth gives me an area of 2 twelfths. Next, I can take this and I can add my parts. So I'm going to take 4 plus 1 plus 2 thirds plus 2 twelfths. The only fractions I need to deal with for common denominators are these two. So I'm going to go 4 plus 1 is 5, plus I'm going to turn this into 8 twelfths plus 2 twelfths, which gives me 5 plus 10 twelfths. So I have a total of 5 and 10 twelfths. Now, noticing that these are both even numbers, I can simplify further. So, I can simplify this to 5 and 5 sixths. Again, if I wanted to prove that model or, or test it out with our numerical model, our shortcut, 4 and 2 thirds would be 14 thirds times 5 fourths. So that's going to be 70 twelfths. If we take that, we have 5 times 12 is 60. So that leaves us with 5 and 10 twelfths, which can be simplified to 5 and 5 six by dividing those in half. So again, we end up proving that we can have two ways to do the same thing. One, uh, the numerical model, much quicker. But the model on the right really didn't take us that long and really helped us break it down and make it a little simpler and explain why we do what we do over here.